Welcome to a new video and this video is about a recent question that has been coming up because of the recent sell-off in tech stocks and that's about whether or not the legacy OEMs in automotive, for instance Volkswagen or many of the others, should be actually now a better investment than for instance the new startups or EV companies like Tesla and Neo. So I was actually expecting these kind of questions to come up in Q1. As I have always mentioned that Q1 will be the quarter where most of the fear, uncertainty and doubt about the new EV players will come out. Um, I thought it was actually come mainly from the sales figures, but as the sales figures are continuously strong actually amongst those players, uh, it now came from something else which is the rotation from growth stocks into value stocks. And as I mentioned in my last video about this ongoing correction, which we unfortunately kind of haven't the clear signal yet if it's finished or not. Well, I said that this is kind of fostering some, well, wrong fears around EV stocks and whether we're now just seeing like this unwinding of this bubble, or the bubble explodes, uh, EV stocks are selling off. Um, but as I mentioned in the last video, I think what you currently see is a macro event um, from the rotation into value stocks. And that's affecting the growth stocks on a broader picture here. So not only Neo, not only Tesla, but yes, they are fast growers in the past. Also, the stock prices have been up a lot. So that's where you take profits if you want to rotate into something ridiculous like fossil fuels or bank stocks. Now, one of our patrons has sent me this article. Um, it's actually in German, but I think you will grasp the picture. It's about well, here uh, a comparison of Volkswagen, Neo and Tesla. And what you can see here is the black line of Tesla going down as well as Neo, which is tanking even further, but kind of in sync with Tesla here. And at the meantime, Volkswagen stock doing quite well here up 25%. I think that's from November last year. And this did not go unnoticed, not only the media, but many of you possibly also asked the same question, whether or not Tesla Neo is only hype and you know, what are the chances actually of Volkswagen to um, catching up here or other players in the field. And also for instance, Herbert Dies, who is now also on Twitter, uh, also now tweeting about the stock price, uh, which is surprised to see like, uh, and it's now at new all time highs, 5% intraday, possibly something that they don't see very often. And you know, after the diesel gate, uh, that's certainly something to celebrate for Volkswagen here that they did a good job at turning around this big ship, uh, investing heavily in EVs. And now it seems that this also is recognized by the markets. But it's funny to see while Elon is tweeting that stocks probably too high now to see the Volkswagen CEO here like kind of going out there and pumping the stock. But jokes aside, this of course has to do something with this rotation into value stocks. Um, Volkswagen is still one of those, uh, well, from an investor's perspective, perceived close to a fossil stock and a value stock. Um, but that doesn't mean that Volkswagen couldn't change um, over time and could also be perceived again as a technology stock. And I think this is the ultimate reason why NIO and um, Tesla are valued the way they are. They are valued as tech companies. And the reason why they are tech stocks and growth stocks are their business models and the underlying technology. So NIO and Tesla have proven that they are much more than automotive manufacturer. In particular for NIO, this is even another business model that they don't even own the factories themselves. Rather, they are establishing a platform business and ecosystem model. You can see most of my videos that I've done before on NIO. And for Tesla, they are even on top of that also the technology leader in terms of manufacturing of EV cars and yeah, also producing them at the most cost effective way and unmatched by anybody else out there. Only NIO is also closing the gap here a little bit with pretty nice vehicle margins of around 17% lately. So as long as Tesla and NIO can prove that they are the leader in the EV field in their respective niche and uh, target group. Plus on top of that, that they have all of the potential to tap into those software enabled revenue streams, reoccurring fees, high margin businesses. For instance, for NIO, it's e-commerce, but also um, their app technology, the autonomous driving and so on. And of course for Tesla, it's clearly having a unique and leading approach towards full self-driving, their ventures into the insurance business uh, and so on. These 
these are all the reasons why investors look at this and I give them multiples that are more common to be seen in actually technology stocks and not so much in the common automotive industry. So that's why it also doesn't make sense to compare uh, those legacy uh, car manufacturers like Volkswagen, like BMW and so on uh, with those technology stocks. And I found this comment by the Deutsche Bank analyst Edison Yu pretty insightful about how the market thinks about those stocks and actually also the prospects that maybe Volkswagen or other OEM at some point may actually catch up with NIO and Tesla, not so much in terms of having the leadership in the EV field, but also unlocking those revenue streams and those potentials. So there is certainly the opportunity for them to tap into these fields as well and becoming valued also as a tech stock. So there could be a, a way to see that those um, stocks may actually grow their uh, market cap in the future. But currently what is missing to that is actually a, some proof that these companies can actually tap into the vast growing EV market uh, and actually be a significant player in those fields. Currently, Tesla has the, you know, the timing advantage here. They are five years ahead of the competition and therefore they are most likely to capture most of the market of electric vehicles in the future globally. And NIO is also doing pretty well in capturing their niche currently in China, but possibly also I think they are well positioned to be one of the first um, Chinese companies actually to be successful in Europe and the US too. So they are perceived to be the new dominant players um, because they are pure EV brands and they have now all of the manufacturing set up, the brand set up and importantly the ecosystem set up. So this is what currently is unlocking very high growth rates, um, year over year growth rates for 50% plus. And such growth rates are currently not seen with those legacy car companies. And, you know, tech stocks are obviously a multiplication of the, the growth potential and then also the, the margin side of the business. So the core competency in software in building this EV uh, brand, but also ecosystem in general is the unique asset of both Tesla and Neo that is currently hard to be copied because they have lots of Vorsprung in, in those fields. So for instance, Tesla with the superchargers building out this global network, even uh, the conglomerate of different OEMs in Germany is kind of struggling to do the same thing for their fleets and not to mention that it's not even owned by those companies. The same here with NIO with the unique approach, um, of course, also having the superchargers for NIO, but also combining all of the state grid supercharger on top of that, plus the battery swapping and adds as some uh, unique mode there. So a company like Volkswagen would need to prove that they can build something similar at the same let's say um, speed or also at the same quality and with the same innovative um, character here. And so far, I think they're kind of failing to deliver on that. So we have problems that we can see that some of the EVs that they are putting out there are currently not built on an entirely purely designed EV platform strategy. This is supposed to come out in maybe five to six years later on onto the markets. Current EVs built by, for instance, Volkswagen are mostly kind of a mix of their old gasoline gases that have now a battery into it. So same for, for instance, Mercedes-Benz cars. So I've been driving those cars and they're very well built and certainly good cars. I don't doubt and challenge that these companies are able to manufacture good cars and that they will certainly find um, a bias and they have a, a loyal customer base. But still, these are not pure EVs and this will reflect in margins, in profitability, in scale and ultimately also in being able to convince their customers to actually buy the cars in the end. So for instance, take software on the current cars. It's still having issues, for instance, with over the air software updates and also with the software like the, the interface itself. And this means that, yeah, these problems they can be solved at some point in time, but Tesla and NIO are just three to five years down the road. And by the time that these players catch up, they will have already something new out there. So um, this is kind of now this unique timing opportunity, this window of opportunity also for those EV players. And that's also frankly the reason why they are being valued the way they are. And in the end here, 
For instance, with the point of Volkswagen, I think they made a big mistake by squeezing out the Audi retail investors. Um, so they kind of took uh, Audi private or back into the company again. And um, thereby Audi is not publicly listed anymore. Now they are thinking about um, to also list um, Porsche separately because they saw that the retail investor, but also investors in general, have really fueled this EV revolution now with the increased market caps in 2020. Uh, so these companies were able to raise more cash than, for instance, uh, Volkswagen uh, has now uh, problems because they are heavily in debt, for instance, uh, but maybe some of the American companies have even bigger problems in, in this aspect. So um, it was, I think, a strategic big, big problem that they didn't uh, keep Audi listed and keep uh, Porsche or, or make a Porsche IPO quicker. Because with that, I am certainly, I have no doubt that they actually would have profited from this EV revolution at the same time and thereby also having a better access to the capital markets and could tell a, a better story. Because Audi and, for instance, also Porsche to some extent, they have a good lineup of cars coming up uh, that are fully electric. So they're doing the best to rebrand themselves and to, you know, really get these things up and going. But as I mentioned before, whether or not these are the best products in the markets currently, I have reason to doubt that on the pricing side, on the ecosystem, on the margins and so on of everything that investors would look into. So it's certainly taking more time for making this change and shift. And if they do that, this could be possibly an investment opportunity, which I personally would not take down the road because for me there is too much executional risk um, with the, the problems around shifting this big ship um, from um, selling ice cars uh, to uh, a, for them now a less profitable business from now into battery um, technology and then also the issue that for instance the management execution issue there's lots of hierarchy lots of people even fighting it internally for instance with BMW even the CEO hasn't committed to a electric a full electric strategy yet so I see there are still lots of barriers and hurdles to overcome until they can finally 100% commit to to that and surely there will be um, selling lots of EVs because they have to it's the only way to actually survive in the future um, but if this is an investment case I'm not so sure because for also for Tesla and Neo these are businesses that are mostly owned by the founder and CEO like Lee Bin and Elon Musk and this makes all of the difference in my point of view um, with Volkswagen you have management come and go every five to ten years and then they have different goals and different um, incentives and alignments as well so I'm not sure if this would be the best investment but if you are a more conservative investor and for instance the recent volatility in growth stocks is too much for you to take then yes, Volkswagen might be a good investment. I, I don't want to argue that because over time, certainly there is this opportunity that they uh, manage this shift successfully and then also become uh, maybe more valued as a growth stock or a tech stock in the future. But if you ask me, I certainly have a different investment style there. So I would rather be comfortable and investing in such growth opportunities, obviously, in the lower uh, tiers like when this is just emerging and then uh, yeah take this volatility from now and then and stick with it until the uh, investment thesis has actually fully played out. So I hope this could shed some light on my thinking behind the difference between growth stocks, tech stocks and also what's happening in the automotive industry. This is based on my insights as a consultant in the automotive industry and how I think those companies work, the, the markets uh, that they can tap into, how I think that the capital Capital markets works, uh, which are, in my point of view, the most important one because, you know, if you don't understand the mindset of the market, um, then it's really hard to um, be successful with it. And yeah, this is my outlook for now. Uh, please leave a, a comment below, uh, smash the like button if you find this insightful, and then see you in the next video.